Good evening, everyone. It is Monday, March the 30th, 2020. It is currently 6.48 p.m. Central Time, and we are once again live on the air coming to you from Victory Baptist Church, located in the middle of nowhere, Texas, Ovalo, Texas, to be specific. And yes, we were live on the air just a few minutes ago, and everything just stopped working. So we deleted all of that. Here we are once again. It is Monday evening, March the 30th, 2020. Welcome. Thank you for listening to this live broadcast. If you're not listening to this broadcast live, you're listening to this after it's been uploaded and posted all over the internet. Thank you for listening that way as well. If you would like to listen to us live and you want to know how, just email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. I will send you the link and all the instructions. Um, I could give all of that information right now, but but we have a lot to talk about. So I want to spend time on the main point right here on what we're on the topic at hand and not uh, spend all of that time giving that kind of information. Hopefully, hopefully that will be okay this one time. All right. Are you ready? We have a lot to talk about. It is Monday. It is March the 30th and it is 2020. 2020. And you know, and I know that we are currently living in the middle of a pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic that is spread around the world, COVID-19, has infected thousands upon thousands of people. I think we're well over. In fact, let me just give you the numbers right now. All right. Instead of, instead of uh, just, you know, mentioning the numbers, let me just be very accurate. All right, because I want to be very accurate in everything I say in this particular episode. Well, I always want to be accurate in every episode, but uh, this one's going to be somewhat controversial. So I want to make sure I, I have everything correct or someone will find one thing that I say wrong and focus on that. Um, the latest numbers as of Monday, March the 30th, 2020 at 6.50 p.m. Central Time, 782,000 365 confirmed cases of COVID-19, the coronavirus that is spread around the world. Again, 782,365 confirmed cases. The total deaths as of Monday, March the 30th, 2020 at 6.51 p.m., 37,582 people have died. 37,582 people have died. So we have people who are infected. We have people who are dying. And in the midst of all of this, your life and my life has been turned completely upside down. Schools are shut. All sporting events have been basically canceled. Uh, seasons have been suspended. If Who knows how long all of this is going to happen. But I mean, literally, all sports are done right now. They're just gone. There's, there's no sports to watch. Concerts being canceled everywhere. Shut down. Movie theaters shut down. Uh, gatherings of larger than 10 people or more in most states. No, you can't do that. You can't get together. This stops parties and bars and all kinds of establishments like that. In most restaurants, you cannot go inside to eat. You have to order for pickup. Life as we know it has been suspended. Life as we know it has been turned upside down. And everyone's trying to figure out what to do and how how to move forward, how this is going to impact them, their family, how this is going to uh, impact the economy, how it's going to impact you as an individual, your economic situation. And every one of you right now listening to me, everyone who will hear me, you could email me and tell me your stories, how this is impacting your life, what you're doing, how this is, you know, how this is affecting you. What, what, you know, what, what, what are you thinking about it? What, what are your thoughts? Because everyone's trying to figure this out. And a lot of people are struggling. Well, how long... Do we continue to follow these shelter-in-place orders? Uh, the, uh, uh, states, cities, communities all over the United States of America and around the world, people are being told, stay at home. Don't leave unless it's absolutely necessary for food, for medicine. Other than that, shelter-in-place. Stay at home. And a lot of people are like, no, I, I, I shouldn't have to do this. And some people are trying to violate those rules and then uh, uh, 
Local authorities and state officials are trying to go, okay, what do we do? Do we have people arrested? Do we find people? Uh, They're trying to put uh, travel restrictions. You know, people from certain states can't come into this state, and they want people at the border saying, hey, no, 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 at the state line. If you're coming across and we see those plates, you've got to, you, you're going to be told to go, uh, to go isolate and you know, self-quarantine yourself for 14 days. Are people going to follow those rules? There's becoming a lot of arguing and, dis- and, and debate about how, how long this is going to continue. And you feel like we're reaching a point that more and more people are going to say, forget this. I'm going back to my life. But uh, how many businesses are going to continue to do this? How, how, what laws will have to be passed? How forceful will the government become and trying to do this because what they're trying to do is in a sense what they call flatten the curve keep everyone away from from each other social distancing so that the virus can't spread anymore and they want to do this as quickly as possible so that everyone can get back to work but the longer this lasts and and you know, and, and other places like no it's going to go this long no it's going to go this long I think you're going to reach a point where more and more people are going to become very frustrated and a lot of people are going to push back. So you've got all of this happening in society. Society is beginning to debate this. They're beginning to argue this. I think more and more people are are, are starting to get frustrated with it. And it's going to raise lots of issues in society at large. But it impacts every area of society from education to business to entertainment. Everything has been basically canceled, all right? All of April has been canceled. All of life has been shut down as we know it. But there is one area that I want to focus on in this episode, and one area only. I want us to think, and I want us to consider what is beginning to happen in regards to the church, Churches across the United States of America and around the world are being told, no, you can't, you can't have a gathering more than 10 people. Basically, that wipes out church services. You can't, you can't have a traditional church service. So churches everywhere have turned to online streaming, right? Online streaming. We're going to online and we're going to, we're going to go online and we're going to live stream all of our services. Some churches are like, nope, 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 we're not going to live stream because that gives the wrong impression. That gives people the idea that that's actual church. We don't want to, uh, this to impact the church negatively when this is all over. We're not going to live stream. Others are like, hey, hey no, no, no. And you're seeing this. This is beginning to, I think, we're going to see this increasing. Some churches are saying, no, for, forget it. We're not going to follow the rules. Forget you. We're not going to follow the rules. We don't care what the rules are. We are going to have church. Whether you like it or not, no matter what rules, we're going to have church. So you've got those who are like, yes, okay, you don't want us to have gatherings. We're going to follow the rules. We'll move to live streaming. And they're trying to come up with every way they can to make the live streaming work. Others are like, nope, live streaming sends the wrong message. We're not going to live stream. Now, I don't know how long they just don't do anything. I mean, Hey, we're not live streaming. We're, we're, I don't know what we're doing. But, well, we're still at church. We haven't seen each other in a month. I, now, I know some of them are trying some different things, but it becomes really weird. Like, we're not going to live stream church, but we'll get together and live stream small groups. Or we'll, and they'll say, well, that's not church. And I, I don't know. They're, they're trying to make a point. And then you've got the others who are like, nope, we're not going to follow the rules. The Bible commands us to not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Um, it tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And that's a scriptural, that's a command. Therefore, if the government tells us we can't, they are forcing us to, dis, to disobey scripture. Therefore, we are going to resist and we are going to stand and we're going to fight no matter the consequences. So you have this kind of a division happening within Christianity. And, and, and I want to make this very clear. Something is happening that I think Christians really need to, to take. And we're going to be talking about this. We're going to be talking about this. And I want you to, I want you to just, I want you to hear everything I'm going to say. I'm going to try to present this. I'm going to try to look at this, this entire situation from every point of view. I'm going to try to be fair. I'm going to try to be accurate. And I know because I'm just not coming here with one agenda and one point of view and try to get that point of view across, what's ultimately going to happen to me is everyone from every point of view is going to get mad at me and everyone's going to be shooting at me. But if you do that, you're not being fair because I'm I'm trying to go, let, let's look at all of this from different perspectives. Let's try to understand each perspective. So I'm going to say some very strong words right here. And I, and, and I know these are going to offend some people, but I don't, I don't really care. 
All right. So I need you to listen to me carefully. Right now is the church. And I speak of that in a very general sense. The church, the Christian church, Bible believing churches who hold a historical biblical Christianity right, who, who believes in the teaching of the scriptures in an in-depth way, teaching of theology, church history, doctrine, theology, right? Those are the kind of churches I'm primarily focused on because that's, that's well, that's the kind of church I, our church strives to be. That's the kind of uh, church I want this church that I'm speaking from. I want, that's what I want it to be. We're facing an opportunity where the entire world is being shut down. And many of the things that those people in the world really look to and they spend their time on and they, and they, they give their attention to and their money and their focus, and, and, and it's almost a passion of them. You could even say some of their idols, some of their gods that they live for, that they, they, they spend their time thinking about and they're passionate about and they spend all their time with. Many of those things have been simply taken away from them. Look at how many men spend countless hours, sports, 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 sports. It's almost a God. Well, that God has been, he's been canceled. That God has been shut down. Many people, entertainment, 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 maybe going to a movie, going to a concert, going here, going there, all shut down. Just stay at home. Just stay at home. You you can't, you just, it's over. Stop. So many different things that people love and care about, they're all been taken away. And this is an opportunity for the church to have a united front saying, hey guys, all of these gods have been taken away. But you know what? Those gods were never truly what life was about. Let us tell you about the true God because your purpose in life is to glorify him and to enjoy him forever. Let us tell you about the true God. Let us tell you about the true purpose in life. And right now, as you are you know, maybe worried about a, a virus and worried about getting sick and worried about death, and maybe, maybe the thought of death and mortality is now more on your mind than ever, let us tell, tell you about God and about eternity and about salvation and about heaven and hell. Let us tell you about his word. Let us tell you about theology and the scriptures. You've got Got some extra time on your hand, maybe consider, you know, reading some scripture and asking questions and we'll, we'll, we'll answer those questions for you. This is a time where the church could have a united front. However, what is happening is the church right now is beginning to argue and fight with one another. They're beginning to have these online disputes and these online fights. And I want everyone to know all Christians who are involved in these online fights and disputes about what, you know, what the church should or shouldn't do. Let me say this. It is a foolish and dumb to do that. This is not the time to have that fight. If you want to have that fight, have it in private. Not do it out in public. This is not the time. The world is looking. Where, where's the world going to turn? Where's the world going to turn? Well, we, Christians are running around. We have the answers. We have the answers to what is happening. We have the answers that God is sovereign. We have the answer that we live in a fallen world. And this is an example of living in a fallen world. And as a result of living in the fallen world, the world is cursed and there's pain and there's sickness and there is death. But there is coming a new heaven and a new earth. And you can experience that through Jesus Christ. This is the, we claim we have all of these answers, but instead of sharing these answers and using every opportunity and all the technology that we have to do that, no, 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 no. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. We're going to argue. We're going to argue. And so here, here's what you have. You have the camp that's live streaming. Their, their mentality goes something like this. We're live streaming because the, the, uh, the authority that we believe God ordained authority, because we believe all authority is ordained by God, Romans chapter 13, um, this side says, hey, we believe that that authority is God-ordained, and they're saying, hey, stop, don't have meetings because we got to flatten this curve. You're doing this for public health's sake. You're doing this because you love other people, because you love neighbor, uh, love your neighbor. So we're not going to meet because we don't want to put, we don't want to make ourselves, um, we don't want to become um, a danger to other people. We don't want other people to get sick. We don't want other people to get infected. We don't want people in our congregation to be passing it around. We don't want to be known to the lost world that that's the church that helped spread the coronavirus in the community because they kept meeting. We don't want to have a bad testimony. We want to show love for one another. We want to show obedience to the authority. So we're, we're still going to have church. We're just going to do it online and we're going to use all the technology we can to, to get the message out. Now, that side says that. 
The other side, the side that says, no, 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 we should have church, they will look at the side that's not having church and doing it online, and they'll say, hey, 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 online, that's not church. You're not having church. You're disobeying God. God tells you not to forsake the assembly, uh, the assembly together. You're forsaking the assembly. You're compromising. You're bowing to political officials who are keeping you from obeying God's word. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're living in fear. You're living in subjection to human authority. You're not trusting God. You're not following God. You're not obeying God. And then the other side, no, no, no. You don't love your neighbor. You're not, and you don't, and you're not following Romans 13. And they begin to argue. And then you've got the other side that says, hey, we're not live streaming because that's not church. So we're just not going to have church. Well, then they kind of get caught in the middle because the live streaming people are going, why aren't you live streaming? That makes no sense. And they're like, well, because, you know, it's not church. And then the people who are are holding services, they're looking at them going, wait, you're not live streaming and you're not having church. What is your problem? And then everyone begins to argue and everyone has their position and everyone believes their position is biblical and everyone believes their position is godly and everyone believes the reason they're holding their position is because they're more spiritual than everyone else. That, that's how it starts coming across. And when I say everyone, obviously there's exceptions. There's plenty of pastors not involved in all of this. Speaking in a general way, speaking in a general way, I understand this. But then all this, all this arguing and, and, and each side, and here's what becomes so horrible about all of this. Each side begins to act like they are more spiritual than the other side. And and we've got to stop all of this, patting ourselves on the back, flaunting what we're doing, making sure the whole world knows the people who are, con- are still having services. They're really flaunting it. They're, they want the whole world to know that they're conducting services. Even though they're conducting services in person, they're still live streaming and they're making sure everyone's, uh, that the camera zooms in to all the people in the audience so that they can show everyone, we're not afraid, we're spiritual, we're, you know, we, we trust God, all of you don't. And, and so they're kind of flaunting it that they're spiritual. Uh, the people doing it online, I haven't seen... Uh, I haven't watched every online service, so I can't necessarily say that they're flaunting it, but there's probably some that are. There's always this tendency to think that what you're doing is the right way and what everyone else is doing is the wrong way. Now, there obviously is times to to rebuke, and there's obviously times to speak against. There's no question. There's no question. If you're speaking amongst believers, yeah, you can can argue about it and you can talk about it, and that's the place amongst lost people we they need to see something they need to look to the they're, they're, they don't know where the answers are they need to go oh the church look they're all talking about the same thing let me listen to them but if, if they look to the church and like all they're doing is fighting over whether they should meet or not meet this is crazy in fact they may perceive the meeting the fact that you're meeting is that you don't care about anyone and that you're unloving and that you're three seconds away from the the you know a sane asylum um now again we can't always do everything we can't base our decisions on what the world thinks, but I just, you know, I just wonder what the world thinks when they see all of this. But you have all of this fighting happen. So within the church, we're starting to get division. We're starting to get fighting. We're starting to get arguing about whether we should meet or not meet, whether we should show up or not show up, whether we should live stream or not live stream. This is happening within the church. And I, as long as this continues, I want to make sure this is very clear. As long as this continues, as long as the COVID-19 virus is spreading, people are dying, people are getting sick, as long as society is shutting everything down, this is going to become a more contentious issue by the week. Every Lord's Day that comes and every Lord's Day that goes where churches are shut down, there's going to start becoming more and more contention and arguing and fighting. Listen, let's just be honest. There's going to be great financial concerns. Many churches are going to start making decisions based off finances than there are anything else because the doors are shut. No offerings are coming in. Or if they are coming in, they're probably not coming in far below what they typically get. And some churches are not going to be able to survive. So this is going to become a bigger and bigger issue. So here's here's what and and we're gonna t- it's get it, it it today it took a turn and it went, it went to another level. So right now I'm just trying to establish the foundation, and then I'm, we're gonna go to where it went today. This is very important for many. Now this is very important for church members. Let me make this very clear for all church members. 
This is not the time for you to be causing problems for your pastors and your elders over whether you think they should meet or not meet. This is not the time for you to try to act all super spiritual and start arguing and fighting and causing trouble and causing disputes and causing division. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Church members, come on, this is not the time to start arguing and fighting over. We should be meeting. No, we shouldn't be. Stop. This is a time where you at least allow some grace and mercy to the leadership. Now, if you, if you have a concern, you can come to them in a loving way and a private way. You're not sharing it with other people in the church, but you've got to give them a chance to try to figure it out. You've got to give a chance. Now you can, and again, if you don't like it, you can encourage for something better or something more. If they're only doing one service per week and that's all they're giving you, you can say, come on, can you turn on the mic one more time, two more times, three more times? I'll help you. You can, you can offer, uh, that's not just complaining about them not doing it. You're, you're, you're encouraging a solution. You're encouraging something. So, um, just, this is the time church members don't need to be causing trouble. This, please, 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 please. Trust me. Churches are trying hard to figure this out. So we've got this. We've got what's happening in the world, right? All the things being closed down. And I think there's going to be, people are going to become uh, less and less content with this, less and less willing to submit to this. And there's going to become more and more frustration within the population in general if this continues to push on. That's a fact. Next, within the church, we've got we've got a, a division taking place. We've got fighting taking place. We've got lines being drawn. We've got arguing happening, and that will only increase. Make this very clear. That will only increase as we see this continue. It's going to continue in both. It's going to increase in both areas where there's going to be more dissatisfaction, more frustration, and more like, wait, how long do we do this? I mean, think about it as a church. How long do we not meet? How long? If this goes all the way through April, you're telling me that I, that I am not going to have a normal church service for the entire month of April. And then what if it goes through May? Like, no, that that's hard to even wrap my mind around. That's hard to even comprehend. And, and pastors are going to get frustrated. Church members are going to get frustrated. Everyone's going to get frustrated. So we have to realize this is coming. We have to realize that there's a potential for some major problems and there's fighting within the church. But today it took a turn because now, now the church, those churches who want to continue to meet and they're refusing to follow the rules and they're kind of pushing back. And in some cases they're flaunting that they're pushing back. Well, now local officials police, they're pushing back. And we have today a pastor who has been arrested for having a church service yesterday. This occurred in Tampa, Florida. Mega church pastor arrested for conducting a church service where there was more than 500 people. Now, again, I already know the different sides within Christianity. You may be on the streaming side going, man, that's crazy. He doesn't love his neighbor. You may be in the side where, hey, they shouldn't have church and they shouldn't live stream. And so you're against it as well. Or you may be on the side that he did the right thing. He he pushed back. What, what I want you to see is we just need to see what happened. And we'll, we'll have to talk about it in a minute. But let's just figure out what happened, okay? I want you to see exactly what happened. And I've got all the information. So we can do a, a fair job here, all right? Let's go to the article. This comes to us from Fox 5 New York. However, um, underneath the headline, they have Fox 13 News. So I think this comes from a Fox affiliate in New York and a Fox affiliate in the Florida, Tampa area is I think what we have here. And the two contributed to this story. Uh, here is the headline. Tampa megachurch pastor arrested after leading packed services Despite safer at home orders, they're calling it safer at home orders here where I live. It's called shelter in place orders. I think that's where most how most places call it, but they call it safer at home orders. This was published six hours ago, but it was updated three hours ago. So this is the most updated version that I could find. Tampa, Florida. 
The pastor of a Tampa megachurch, the pastor of a Tampa megachurch is facing charges after refusing to close its doors despite a safer at home order in effect in Hillsborough County. Um, Now, this uh, order was put in effect to stop the spread of COVID-19. Obviously, that's why the order was put in place. Everyone stay at home and and everyone's isolating. Everyone is is there. And so the, the virus can't continue to spread. It has nowhere to go. Uh, the sheriff, the sheriff says up to 500 people were in attendance at Pastor Rodney Howard Brown's Sunday services. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown's Sunday services. Now, this is where I have to be very transparent and I have to be very fair. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, in my opinion, in my estimation, is a charismatic wacko, all right? I believe he's a false prophet. I believe he's a false teacher. I believe he's a heretic, and I have a hard time even saying that he even falls anywhere within the realms of historical biblical Christianity, all right? So theologically, I got no agreement with the guy, none at all, zero. However, however, I still want to be fair to this situation. I still want to be fair to this situation. So here is the question. And we really have two questions. Number one, should churches meet? Should churches meet? Question number two, if they decide to meet, should people be arrested for doing so? Should leadership be arrested? Should the church members who show up, should they be arrested? Now, you may argue they shouldn't meet, but then you think, well, but they shouldn't be arrested. Others may say, no, 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 they shouldn't meet and they should be arrested. Others feel like that, well, we'll talk about um, where some Christians see this story going, but this is what we're going to do. I like to make sure you have all the information. A press conference was held today in Tampa, Florida, announcing the warrant for this pastor's arrest. He was arrested. He, I think he was released like 45 minutes on five, a $500 uh, bell. It was It was pretty low. So it's not like they went crazy on him, but uh, he was arrested. I think 45 minutes later, he was released after posting the $500 bell. So, um, so, but this, this story is causing now, now listen, I talked about there's already division within the church. Oh, this is creating even more division now. This adds a whole new development. Not only now do we have the church at odds with the world, okay, with the, the, the earthly authority, Now this is causing even more division in the church. I've seen all kinds of arguing today over this. Well, the man should have been arrested. Absolutely not. You cannot say that. If this man is arrested, this is a takeover. This is a takeover of the church. This is what's going to happen. They're going to shut churches down. And once they shut them down, they're not going to allow them to reopen once the COVID-19 uh, a pandemic is over. See, this is all, this is all to go after religious freedom. We're going to lose our freedom. They are persecuting us. The church needs to stand up. The church needs to fight back. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. They're not just going after churches. They've shut everything down. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. We have a constitutional right to assemble. This is going after our constitutional rights. And now guess is why I think you're going to see possibly more pastors and more churches after this arrest push back. And so now you're going to put the the church at odds with local authority. And then you're going to have Christians fighting each other about whether they support it or don't support it. This has got division and problem. And this is exactly what the church shouldn't do. The church shouldn't find that. This is not the time to end up in these kinds of fights. We have a mission. We have a job. But no, it's going to turn into all of this arguing and fighting and debating and trying to prove a point. We're being persecuted. Now, again, you may not like this. Okay, you may I, I, look. I'll say this very clearly. I, I obviously, as a pastor, we're not having normal services. We're live streaming everything, so obviously, you know what camp I fall into. I believe we do this as a testimony to the world that hey, we don't want we. I don't want to be in the news. Victory Baptist Church continued to meet after uh, all of the restrictions were handed down, after all the suggestions were handed down, and then there, those members started uh, spreading it to one another, and then they spread it to people in the community. Victory Baptist Church is the reason it's spreading. I don't want to be in the news for that. Don't want to be. Remember what happened in South Korea with that big mega church group cult 
uh, you know, they, they they were and there were people who wanted murder charges brought against them. OK, uh, because they kept meeting, they kept meeting and, and their members. And, and in fact, it was most of their members that were spreading it everywhere. You don't want it, That's not the news you want. That's not the news you want. And again, I, I think just out of love for each other, we don't want to spread it to one another. Out of love for those we come in contact with, we're supposed to love others. We're supposed to put others before ourselves. So I clearly have. A thought pattern here, but let me make it very clear. I don't like the idea of the government saying, hey, you can't have church. I don't like that. I understand, but I'm not a fan of it. So should a pastor be arrested? Now, now this is where the debate starts, but let's listen here, here before you answer that question. All right. So should a church be allowed to meet? Should a church meet? No matter what the rules are, violate the rules. Should a church meet? And if they do meet, should people be arrested? Who should be arrested? The pastor or all church members when they pull into the parking lot? Do you want the government doing that? Now, right now, people, you may say no, but what if that death toll jumps up another 25,000, 100,000? What, what if it surpasses 100,000? What if it, how, what, at what level of death are you willing to tolerate before you're like, nope, that's it. Lock everyone in. Or are you just saying, nope, that's the consequences. People meet, spread the virus, people die, people die. Like what's your, where, where is your line? Because I think right now, a lot of people don't perceive it as that much of a threat yet. If it continues to spread and people continue to die, I think people's tone will change dramatically. So should a church meet and should they be arrested? Well, let's listen to how the press conference went down today because I want you to hear it for yourself. You don't have to listen to other people tell you what was said. And then you can you can determine if you agree with their, their logic or if you disagree with their logic. But let's listen carefully. This is from the press conference that happened today in Tampa, Florida with the sheriff. It looks like the sheriff and some uh, district attorney, some um, – some other city, uh, uh, maybe state officials, there announcing what was going on and what was going to happen. Here we go. Thank you for being here today and for your willingness to meet outside in the heat while the sheriff's office continues to do our part to stop the spread of COVID-19. Joining me today is our state attorney, Mr. Andrew Warren, who worked expeditiously with us on this case. Thank you, Mr. State Attorney. And a religious leader from our community who's committed to public safety and the welfare of his congregation, Bishop, Tom, Bishop Thomas Scott. Bishop Scott, thanks for being here today with us. We're living in unprecedented times right now. So many people have lost their jobs, are under stress, and looking for some sense of calm and normalcy. I believe there's nothing more important than faith during a time like this. And as a sheriff's office, we would never impede someone's ability to lean on their religious beliefs as a means of comfort. But practicing those beliefs has to be done safely. Last night, I made a decision to seek an arrest warrant for the pastor of a local church who intentionally and repeatedly chose to disregard the orders set in place by our president, our governor, the CDC, and the Hillsborough County Emergency Policy Group. His reckless disregard for human life put hundreds of people in his congregation at risk and thousands of residents who may interact with them this week in danger. Since last Friday, March 27, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office has been in contact with leaders at the river of Tampa Bay Church. We received an anonymous tip that Pastor Dr. Ronald Howard Brown refu refused request to temporarily stop holding large gatherings at his church. And instead, he was encouraging his large congregation to meet at his church. Pastor Howard Brown's actions were a direct violation of Executive Order 20-5, which went into effect on March 20th, limiting gatherings, including faith-based gatherings, to less than 10 people. He was also violating a safer at home order, which went into effect on March 27th, advising Hillsborough County residents to remain in their homes as much as possible to create greater social distancing and reduce the spread of COVID-19. On Friday and again on Sunday, 
Sheriff's Office personnel and legal staff spoke with attorneys representing the church in an attempt to educate them on the dangerous environment they are creating for their members, our community, and explain why they were in violation of these orders. Additionally, members of our command staff personally went to the church to attempt to speak with Pastor Howard Brown, who did not make himself available, but was advised by church leaders and his legal staff that they were once again refusing to cancel the Sunday evening church service. The River at Tampa Bay Church has an advantage over most places of worship as they have access to technology, allowing them to, sh to live stream their services over the Internet and broadcast television for more than their 4,000 members to watch from the safety of their own homes. Instead, they encouraged people to come and gather at church, even provided bus prints. They even provided bus transportation for the services. This, ha this pastor held not one, but two large services on Sunday, one at 9.30 a.m. and another at 7 p.m. Because of the reckless disregard of public safety and after repeated requests and warnings, I work with our state attorney, Andrew Warren, to obtain a warrant for unlaw unlawful assembly and violation of public health emergency rules, both which are second-degree misdemeanors. Again, our goal here is not to stop anyone from worshiping, but the safety and well-being of our community must always come first. At this time, I invite our state attorney, Andrew Warren, to make a few comments. Mr. Attorney? Good afternoon. First, let me thank Sheriff Chronister and his executive team for handling this situation promptly and appropriately. Public safety is our, always our number one priority, and make no mistake, this issue is about the health and safety of our community. Putting your parishioners at risk in a time of an emergency like this is not only reckless, but it's illegal. If you're violating the Safer at Home order, law enforcement is going to direct you to stop. And the order is clear that it's intended to promote compliance, not punish noncompliance. But where people are refusing to obey law enforcement in this regard, you risk being arrested and prosecuted. I'd like to note that I think it's unfortunate that the pastor here is hiding behind the First Amendment. One, it's absolutely clear that emergency orders like this are constitutional and valid. Second of all, Leaders from our faith-based community across this country have embraced the importance of social distancing. They've encouraged their congregations to practice social distancing for their own health and to slow the spread of COVID-19. Lastly, I'd remind the good pastor of Mark 12:31, which says there's no more important commandment than to love thy neighbor as thyself. Loving your neighbors is protecting them, not jeopardizing their health by exposing them to this deadly virus. I want to thank the sheriff again and his team for how quickly they work to bring an appropriate resolution to this situation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warren. At this time, I'd like to invite Bishop Thomas Scott to make a few comments. Bishop Scott. Thank you, Sheriff Chronister, and we, uh, I would like to also thank you for your support and the importance of public safety in Hillsborough County. I want to say personally that we know we have a great sheriff here in Hillsborough County who has been doing a great job, an outstanding job for this community and to provide public safety. Let me just say that um, we need to understand how important uh, this issue is uh, to us, COVID-19 and social distancing. It is very important. It is important also for the religious community to govern themselves according to the laws of the land. The Bible instructs us to obey the laws of the land. Secondly, Jesus says, if you're compelled to go one mile, go two. If you're compelled to take off your coat, overcoat, give them your top coat, which means what he's saying there is go the extra mile, the distance, to make sure that you're within compliance. And so today what we have done at our church, at the 34th Street Church, is that we have ceased services on Sunday morning, on Wednesday night, 
and we do streaming online and Facebook Live on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock and as well on Wednesday nights. And so we, are, uh, we value the importance of the laws of the land and we value the importance of social distancing and more important, protecting our parishioners. Make sure that they are not in harm's way or that they spread this uh, deadly disease throughout the community. And so Sheriff, thank you again for your support and thank you for what you're doing in this community. Thank you, Bishop Scott. I also, I also thank, thank you for not only what you do for our faith-based community, but the entire community as a whole. We're, we're fortunate to have you. Thank you. There you have it. There was the press conference. You can draw your own opinion about everything, but let me stress a couple of points. Point number one, why? Why, why, why would Pastor Rodney Howard Brown not simply meet with the sheriff, meet with the district attorney, meet with these individuals and try to work out some kind of resolution. He wouldn't even meet with them. He wouldn't make himself available. See, that is the kind of thing that just makes me furious. Look, the last thing you want is to have a bad testimony. But again, I, I, think, I think this is what's going to happen. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown is going to become a martyr in the eyes of many Christians. He is being persecuted. They're going after him. This is not constitutional. They're going after the church. And if they go after Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, they're coming for us next. They're coming for our church next. We need to stand with him. Even though we may disagree with him theologically, we need to stand with him. Come on now, come on. It would be different if, if, if Pastor Rodney Howard Brown met with them and said, okay, all right, how can I work this? What, what can I do? What, what, can you make any exception for me? What, what, what you know, what, what, if, if I, you know, can you, can you, can I do this? Can I do that? You know, what, what can you do for me? You know, how, how can we work together? But no, he did not even meet because he had made his mind up. He was, I think he was trying to make a point. Look, here's the thing. You can't conduct a church service and act spiritual if you're doing so to make a point. If you're doing so to try to, you know, show the world that we're going to push back and we're, if you're, if, if it, if it almost comes across like a teenager doing a little bit of rebellion simply to make a point just to show that you can, that's not godly. Now, maybe his intentions are nothing but godly, but if the intentions were godly, he would, he would have happily met with the authority. He would have happily sat down with them and said, look, here's the thing. I'm not trying to cause any trouble. I don't want to make your job any more difficult. You've, we're in the middle of a pandemic. The last thing you need to do is be worrying about what I'm doing here. But here is my reasons. Here is my concern. Do you, can you can you see any way that I could work around this? What 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 could I do? And if, and if all they say is the only thing you can do is live stream, we're not going to allow anything else. Then then maybe he would have to say, well, I'm very sorry, but I'm going to have to do so as a matter of conscience and as a matter that I believe this is what the scriptures teach. I would have some greater respect for that. Trying to meet, trying to, to try to hear their concerns, him expressing his concerns, but not to even meet, not even to make himself available and just tell them we're not going to follow. Now, here's my question. Is he going to have a service Wednesday? Is he going to have a service Sunday? Is he going to follow the rules? And, 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 and if he continues to push back, how far does the government take this? Does the government come in and basically take over the building and and basically, you know, board it up and say, nope, you can't use your building? I mean, that would be crazy. They would be, but how far do they push it? How, who's going to blink? Who's going to say, wait a minute, enough's enough here. How far do you take it? Now, again, I, I guarantee you, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown's going to end up all over all kinds of Christian programs, and he's probably going to write a book about it and probably have a DVD series, and it's probably going to become a marketing thing, and he's going to be, you know, the pastor who stood against the man. He stood against those liberals, and he stood against the ungodly elite, and he, he stood for, for, for all the things that all Christians should stand for, and we should stand with him. Sorry, I'm taking a drink of water. As you can tell, I'm losing my voice. Yeah, I don't. So here, here, so let me try to summarize it this way. And I want, and the reason I played that entire press conference is where no one, if you hear someone taking something out of context, you know exactly what was said. And they believe, now whether they're right or whether they're wrong, they believe that during, because of emergency orders in a public health crisis, emergency orders were issued. And as a result of these being emergency orders during a, health emergency, 
that they were not violating someone's constitutional rights, that this is allowed under the Constitution. That's the way they understand it. Now, maybe they're wrong. And but I mean, what are you going? How are you going to continue to fight this? And I mean, uh, the, the fighting of this will take forever. And by the time you get a resolution, hopefully the entire pandemic situation will be over. But 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 here is here's a couple of thoughts. Here's a couple of thoughts. Number one. This issue is about to become meeting or not to meet, meeting or not to meet, live stream or not to live stream. This issue is about to become more, and I believe is going to, going to become more and more contentious within the church. And now that we have a, a Pastor Rodney Howard Brown's been arrested, I think another pastor has been arrested. I think as as th- those churches out there that are, are re- refusing, there's church in Louisiana that's refusing. Um, there, there's, there's a couple of states where you have these big mega churches that are like, nope, we're going to do what we want, Okay. Um, this is going to become more and more a divisive issue within the body of Christ. All right. So, so Christians don't, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. Don't start fighting this. We've got a message we need to get to the world. Hey, right now, everything that you care about has been taken away from you. All of your idols have been taken away from you. All these things that you've spent all your time has been removed from you. Now, listen, listen, listen to us as the church. We're going to tell you about God. We're going to tell you what your true purpose in life is. We're going to we're going to spend time turning on microphones and talking about the things of God. We're going to do that. Don't take the bait and get into all of these fights over this. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Now, if you're talking with a group of Christians, right, and private, private messaging, private chat, and you want to say this is what I think, and this bothers me, and and then you that's that's okay. You can you can do that. Just don't want to turn this into a public fight, where the world is like, what in the world? We're in the middle of a pandemic, and these people are arguing over you know should they meet or should they not meet? Of course, many in the world's perspective is going to be, how dare you try to meet and put my life at risk and put my family's uh, life at risk? And they're not going to respond too kindly to it. So I think that we need to uh, realize that this is going to become more and more divisive within the church. Right? It's going to become more and more divisive with the church. That's number one. It's going to become more and more divisive within the church. You need to realize that. Number two, this is very important. You don't take the bait. Don't, don't fall for it. Don't, don't jump into the middle of it. Don't fight about it. Don't argue about it. Stay above it. It's not going to be very helpful. All right. Number three. If churches continue to push back, this could become a very ugly situation. This could become a very ugly situation, and and uh, we're going to have to see how it plays out. Uh, th- th- put it this way: we'll we'll say number three. This is potential. This has the potential to get really ugly if churches just go all out and refuse, and if more churches join. Like because they see Pastor Rodney Howard Brown do it and they're like, we're going to do the same thing. If more churches join it, this is going to get ugly. So this could become an ugly situation and it's going to, it's going to, who knows how it's going to change the, I mean, people already have a negative view of Christianity. This may even increase it. This may increase it. So we need to watch that. But a a number of, so, and you can number these, you know, however you want, but I think it's important. It's going to become a more divisive issue. Don't take the bait. Um, and um, if churches continue to push back, this has the, uh, ten- the potential to get very ugly. Well, the, the, and point number one, I'm focusing on, it's going to become very divisive within the body of Christ, within the church. Number th- uh, three, the point is, this is going to get ugly as far as the church and the world and how they relate to one another. It's got, it's got the potential of getting very ugly and, and people getting arrested. I don't know if church members start getting arrested, if pro- property gets seized. I think it has the potential. I said potential to get ugly. It all depends on how these churches are going to push back. And number four, I think this is very important. This situation has a potential to get ugly, not just between the church and the world, but this has the potential to get ugly in society. I really don't know how long these orders can go on. I really don't know before people just say, forget it. I'm not following any of your rule, rules. I don't know. And, and, and just think about this. Let's say they, they continue to try to, 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 to restrict all of these actions and people stay at home, stay at home, stay at home. People reject them, rebel against them, 
and we get another outbreak of COVID-19. In other words, it starts going down and all of a sudden it shoots back up. Do then do you do you reinstate the rules that people are now starting to break? I think this has a potential. Now again, potential. I'm throwing out potentials. I'm not throwing out promises or predictions. I'm throwing out the potential things to look for. This is going to become more and more divisive within the body of Christ. Two, as a Christian, don't take the bait. Just try to stay out of the fight because it's not very good. If you want to have a dispute amongst Christians in private, go for it. Don't do it in public. The world needs to see the church having something better than uh, than us fighting. Number three, if churches continue to push back, then this has the potential to get very ugly as far as church and the world is concerned. Church and government officials, this could get ugly. I don't know how this plays out. I don't know what Pastor Rodney Howard Brown's going to do. But if he continues to push back, and I have a feeling right now that that's that's going to be, ego gets in the way. Ego gets in the way. And when ego gets in the way, bad things happen. I know that from my own experience, all right? And number four, I just don't know how long this can continue. I just do not know. Millions of people told to stay home. I just, how long? Like businesses closed down. I, I just I just think we're going to reach a tipping point. I don't know where the tipping point is. I, I will argue it, the tipping point will be somewhere in the month of April. It's got to be within the next 14 days. Within the next 14 days, we're going to reach a tipping point. And you're just going to see full-blown outward rebellion and rejection of the, of the rules. I, I, think, I, think, I think we got 14 days. 14 days. Uh, no more. I can't see it going any more than 14 days. I cannot. I cannot. People are going to just say, forget this. Now, maybe if number if the numbers of people dying jumps dramatically like crazy, maybe it will, it will extend that t- time period because people will be scared. But if they're not scared and they just start thinking that this is all a waste of time, who knows? If the numbers jump, people may go, well, then all, all of these restrictions and the numbers are still jumping. Forget it. There's no point anyway. So who knows? I, it, it's going to be very interesting to see. But I wanted to bring this story to everyone. I wanted you to hear the whole press conference. I wanted to try to look at this from every perspective I could think of. Hopefully, I, I organized this all together. Here, the problem with this episode is this: I had our, I, I had been live for I don't know twenty minutes, fifteen minutes, when everything crashed, and then I got ready to start again. Nothing worked. So this is the third attempt. And here's what happens: once you've already done one recording, and then you're doing a third, you, your mind is thinking, wait, did I say that in the first recording or did I say it in this record? Your, your mind can't remember everything that was said in the first. I hate that feeling. So like, I'm like, well, I, I wanted to go with, or- I don't know if I put that in the correct order. I, I, so I don't even know. Now I'm trying to think, did I say that in the first one, but failed to say it in the third one? I I, I don't know. Did I did I mention it at the beginning of the second? I I, I, uh, I don't know. So hopefully this was beneficial. And again, I tried to present every view there. Uh, we got the three major divisions within Christianity. Don't meet live stream. Don't the second the second major view within Christianity. Don't meet, don't live stream. Third view, hey, forget live streaming or we can live stream if we want, but we are going to meet no matter what anyone says. No one is going to stop us. We're following God and we're not going to um compromise. Those are the three views, three very different views with all within the body of Christ. The body of Christ is becoming more and more divided, and I think it's going to become a much more divisive issue, especially if churches and pastors start getting closed down and uh, pastors start getting arrested. And we've got, we've got possibly two, I think. Um, as this becomes more and more national news, Christians are going to start arguing about it, and they're going to start fighting with one another. And 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 you and and I asked those two questions. I know I did ask that in this recording. Should churches meet? And if they do meet, should the pastor be arrested or who should be arrested? I don't. I don't. I, trust me. I I don't think we should meet. Obviously, I don't. I think that we can we can do our best to to continue to do what the church is called to do using technology. But I don't like the government telling me I can't meet. I, I'm definitely not a fan of that, but I understand. So my view is churches shouldn't meet. If they do, 
Man, I don't... I think it's foolish for churches to push this. I think it's foolish to do this. I think I think all all you're going to do is cause yourself more trouble, and it's going to hurt your testimony, hurt the testimony of Christ. I think it's foolish. I just I don't like the fact of being arrested. I don't like that. I mean, it does bother me. I I don't like ah uh, ah uh, I don't like that idea of of, of uh, you know hey we we show up to worship God. And the cops come walking in. I'm sorry, this is an unlawful assembly. Everyone gets out or everyone, uh, you know, everyone against the wall. We're going to handcuff you or, or you all have to disperse and go back to your homes. You know, the, the leadership is all going to be arrested. I, mean, I don't, I, uh, I don't like that image. I don't like that thought. It does feel very like, uh-oh, uh-oh. But at the same time, you know, what other businesses are out there breaking the rules? If other businesses were breaking the rules, wouldn't they be shut down and people be arrested as well? I, I think the same thing would possibly happen. Again, if, they, if it becomes targeted just at churches, then, then you know, I have a problem. And, and remember, if you listen to that press conference I played, it was an anonymous tip. I bet you it was the neighbors who called on the church. There's the neighbors are saying they're going, wait, why is there 500 cars right across the street? We're all supposed to be sheltering in place. We're supposed to be safer at home. What's going on here? This is crazy. So you're, you're, you're not even, you're not even, you're not even being a good witness to your, to the neighbor of your, your own congregation. So, well, there you have it. That's the latest. What's your thoughts? Should you meet? Should you not meet? Should they be arrested? Shouldn't they be arrested? What, what do you, I'm not here to argue with you. Okay. Look, don't want to argue. I'm just curious about get, kind of gauging how people feel about this. Again, I, I don't think they should meet. I just, I don't like the whole being arrested thing, but at the same time, public health and, and on the other side, I think it's absolutely crazy that you would do this and put people's lives at risk. There was a choir. There was a choir that, um, they decided, nope, we're going to have choir rehearsal. We're all going to get together. We're going to sing. We're not going to follow the rules. They all got together. I think there was 43 of them. I can't, I can't remember, 45 of them. I'm trying to remember the news article. Well, um, guess what? They all met. They all sang. Now, most of them, I think uh, 40 something of them now uh, have been diagnosed you know, with the coronavirus and two people have died. Woohoo, way to go. You proved your point. Genius. You showed them. You showed them, man. You showed them that you don't have to listen. You proved your point. What, now people are sick and people died? What point did you prove? See, that's that's the kind of thing. Yeah, it's great to say we're going to have church. And then what happens when people get kids sick? What happens when people die? Who's going to be held responsible for that? Is the pastor going to be held responsible? Yeah. And we can say a lot more about uh, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, the things he said. I think he, he, try, he tries to make some argument that they have equipment in the church that will zap the virus and kill the virus instantaneously, that if someone sneezes, boom, they've got some kind of equipment that supposedly is going to kill. Yeah, so I guess they've got the cure there. And, and so in some ways, you almost wish they would continue to meet and just for them to be proven that, they, that there's a danger. But bottom line is, the problem is, is if they meet and they get it, they're spreading it to other people. Become, yeah, the, oh, public health. That's the issue. It's public health. You got to, you got to think, Christians, you have to think more about, you've got to think about other people more than yourselves. I mean, that's the biblical model. So, all right, I'll stop right there. I, I could talk about this all day because there's so many different, like I'll, I'll look at it from this perspective and then I'll go, wait, well, what about this? And oh, wait, what about, well, could be, uh, no, could be, uh, no, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, and then I just stop, so. All right, there you have it. Have a great evening. Uh, be safe. Take precautions. Um, and come on, just let's just as a church, let's try to use this as an opportunity for spiritual good. Can we not? Can we ever, can we use anything for spiritual good? Does everything have to become about fighting and arguing and dispute? Everything in the church does. Everything in the church does. Sometimes it's so, so irritating.
All right. Romans 13 is the chapter that if you if you're not familiar with it, I, I, I had my Bible open to read it. But Romans 13, which is the chapter that tells us to obey uh, the authorities. Many people now uh, I've seen uh, some articles saying that this everyone's misinterpreting it and that this is not a situation where we have to obey this law. This is an unaw- awful law and it's telling us to violate scripture. And so now it's going to even become an argument in how to interpret Romans 13. So imagine that. Christians not agreeing on how to interpret a passage of Scripture. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Christians can't agree on how to interpret Scripture. Are you shocked? I'm shocked. Okay, yeah, I'm being very sarcastic. That's one of the things that bothers me so much is like you you, you read a passage and like, nope, this is how you should interpret it. Nope, this is how you should interpret it. And everyone believes their interpretation is, yeah, you said it right. Correct. Yeah, it becomes very frustrating there, uh, but we'll see. We'll see if Romans 13 becomes a a, a, a a passage where there's much battle over in the coming months. All right, be safe. Look after, look after one another, one another, and use this as an opportunity for spiritual good. God bless.